Hello good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here with my second impressions video for the tier 6 premium German battleship Prinz Eitel Friedrich. 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 I was told it's a, the E is a bit longer, but you know, the Prince Eitel Friedrich. That's, I'm sorry if I'm still saying it wrong, I mispronounced most of the ships in this game anyway. But anyway, yeah, so um, basically at the end of the first impressions video, um, I said Prince Eitel Friedrich has really awesome guns, really good secondaries, not not uh, the normal really powerful German secondaries, but these secondaries are still very good, and she's very fast and maneuverable, and she has good AA, but her armor is a bit squishy, and she does only have 8 guns. So I'm going to expand a bit more on the downsides of the ship in this video. Um, because I didn't really touch on them too much in the first impressions video, and now that I've played her a bit more, some of the downsides have become more apparent, so let's go ahead and hop into that. She is fairly squishy, she's not Dunkirk squishy, but, I mean, the ship is a battle cruiser. it's a battle cruiser design, so that is to be expected. So that's not really a huge issue, because you do have the speed, the maneuverability to dance around most shells, but when you encounter something like a Belfast or a Colorado, the Belfast, because she has those really rapid firing, um, HE spammy guns, and they have an IFHE, eh, even more so. But when you come across ships like the Colorado, the uh, Mutsu with big, big guns for their tier. It hurts, I'm not gonna lie. It freaking hurts. And that is to be expected because, you know, you are playing a tier 6 ship, so you can be up tiered to tier 7, but you can also be up tiered to tier 8. And that right there is where, where a lot of the pain comes out when you get up tiered to tier 8. Now, thankfully, from my experiences so far, I have not been up tier to tier 8 a whole lot. I mean, it's not like when you're tier 8 and you get up tier to tier 10, like, in almost half of your games. It's not that bad. But when it does happen, which I would say maybe uh, 3 out of the 10 games I play, I get up tier to tier 8. It does hurt because, one, the armor is is, you know, like I said, she's a battle cruiser, so her armor isn't, you know, battleship levels of armor. And two, she has, her guns are 13 inch guns. And yeah, trying to use 13 inch guns at tier 8, you're not going to be doing a lot of damage to other battleships. Now, you don't get me wrong, if a ship still shows you, shows you their side, you can t easily chunk them for freaking 15,000 damage. But the second they angle just a little bit, you're going to be getting bounces. So when you get up to, to tier 8, you're probably going to be using more HE than AP. And, I mean, I don't like it when you have to spam HE in battleships, but, I mean, there's a couple of battleships that you just have to accept the fact that their AP isn't that great and you have to use HE most of the time. For example, the King George V, Duke of York, uh, Prince Idol Friedrich. Um, any of the, oh, the Monarch too. So, there's a couple of ships that that exception must be made for, and, and there's more. So when you get up to here, you are going to have to be us using HE a lot more. Now, against cruisers, the AP is absolutely fantastic, um, because you can easily citadel cruisers that are angled at you. It's kind of like the Roma, with, because she has those, she has a, you know, small caliber, um, high velocity guns, not the Roma that the Friedrich does, but the but the Roma has 15 inch guns that have a very fast velocity. So when cruisers are broadside to you and the Roma, you're probably going to overpin them. Now, in the Prince Idol Friedrich, you will still overpin them, but not as much because the the caliber is only a 13 inch, and you will be getting some fantastic citadels and cruisers. It's been hilarious to just delete. A cruiser that who thinks he's angled enough, but then you just delete him anyway. It's fantastic. Now when you get up to the tier eight, some of the tier eight cruisers they have more armor, so not so much there. But those tier seven and six cruisers you can pretty reliably uh, do massive damage to them. And on top of that, th the guns are fantastically accurate. 2.0 Sigma with this really tight dispersion. It's a blast to play this ship. Um, 
you know, even when you get up to the tier 8 and you're HE spamming, your guns are still very accurate, so it's easy to set a fire on the, d on the, uh, on the bow, set a fire on the midships, set a fire on the stern. It's not incredibly hard to do, you just have to pray to Orange Jesus that your HE shells start a fire, because you do only have 8 guns, you know, so it's not the best HE spammy ship, but when you get up tiered, you gotta do what you gotta do. Her secondaries are also very, very nice. They aren't like the usual, um, I mean, they kind of are, but they're a notch or two down from being awesome German secondaries. They're still very, very good secondaries, don't get me wrong. The only thing is I wouldn't recommend building too heavily into them because you need to, you know, use um, the aiming systems modification instead of the secondary modification for your modules um, because you can get just amazing dispersion in your main guns with uh, the aiming systems mod rather than going for the secondary battery mod which I mean you could go for the secondary battery mod and then you would have some awesome <laughs> secondaries for your tier but I wouldn't. I would go for the the the, the, the uh, dispersion mod, and this is coming from me, someone who loves secondary builds and loves to brawl. It's just why wouldn't you want even better dispersion on some already amazing dispersion? Now, AA, the ship does have really good AA, um, and I'm saying really good for a German battleship. It's not American levels of AA, like you can't just forget about about carriers. But I had a game where a carrier just wanted to sink me. And it was it was a tier 6 carrier, so it, no, not a tier 8 or a tier 7, it was a tier 6 carrier. And he just went at me again, and again, and again, and again. He pretty much targeted only me for most of the game. He may have targeted one or two other ships toward, toward the end when he finally realized he just couldn't get to me. And it's not that he couldn't get to me, he got to me. He just couldn't sink me because... I would shoot down one or two planes on, on the way in, and then as his planes were retreating, I would shoot down another one or two, sometimes wiping out an entire squadron. So when she faces carriers of her own tier, her AA is pretty fearsome. But again, when you get up to the tier 8 with some tier 8 carriers, mm, it's a bit of a different story. But I would recommend getting BFT and AFT just to buff up the secondaries a little bit, and it plus it gives you some pretty good AA. So why not Fantastic AA? She certainly has strong AA if you get BFT and AFT, and that's why I would suggest that you do get those two. I would also suggest you get the um, MLG turrets because her turret reverse time is 45 seconds base, and with the small guns and maneuverability of the ship, I would recommend trying to pick those uh, those um, pick that turret rotation speed up a bit more. Other than that, um, completely preference your playstyle. You know, as far as if you want to go kind of brawly or kind of a long range sniper I mean but you can't really get too incredibly long range on the ship because her maximum range is 17 ish kilometers so it's not certainly not a backline sniper I would certainly use her maneuverability to get into position kind of medium range because I always say this if the guns are accurate at long range they're more than likely very accurate at medium range and with the Friedrich her guns are very accurate at medium range so that is certainly where I would play her. And with her maneuverability and rudder shift, you can get some nice torpedo beats in. Um, I mean, her rudder shift time isn't incredibly fast, but it is decent enough to where you can dodge torpedoes pretty well. Which you're going to have to do because her torpedo, torpedo protection isn't... It's good, but it's not... Oh, I don't have to worry about eating a torpedo. I mean, it, there's not really many ships you can go, oh, it's just one torpedo, no problem. Besides, like, the Yamato or the Alabama. Um, but other than that, she's a pretty good all-around ship, just a little lacking in the armor department, and it just hurts a little bit more when she gets up-tiered. I mean, plus, you gotta consider, this is a ship you can potentially get for free if you do the, uh, campaign for her. Or you can pay 30 bucks to get her, uh, just her and the, uh, Nerds of Steel campaign. Or you can also buy one of the two bundles, you can, I think it's like $130 for her plus two campaigns where you can get some steel out of them and I mean $130 for a tier 6 is pretty expensive but you get like a 10 point captain a ton of flags to blooms and two campaigns where you can where you can earn steel out of them 
So you have to look at that and decide which option you would want to get. I would say for $30 for the ship, absolutely worth it. Um, in, or just grinding her out for free through the campaign, of course, absolutely worth it. It's an amazing ship you can get for free. Um, now if you want to buy the campaign with the steel, uh, that, to me that's just, if you want steel that badly and you really don't have any way to earn it besides ranked which or uh, ranked or clan battles that's just up to you I mean I bought the um, what's it called the still monsters campaign it was sixty dollars so I only paid about eighty ish dollars so I probably would have been better off buying the eighty dollar bundle but you know that's that's just I make poor buying choices sometimes <laughs> so again it's completely up to you in in which bundle you want to buy but I saved thirty dollars flat She's completely worth it. So that is my second impressions for the Prince Eitel Friedrich. Um, the final person video will probably be up in a week or two after I, I get some even more games played in her, which I will be playing her a lot because of the um, the Still Nerves campaign, which you have to use the Friedrich for, and plus the campaign to get the Friedrich and the other tier six uh, tier six ships that they gave up for free in the past um, events. You can do this pretty easily with the Friedrich. So that review should be out in a couple of weeks. So thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe. We're on our way to 1,500 subscribers, and we're getting pretty close to 1,200 already. And God, thank you guys for that. I really, it's really shocked me how fast this channel has been growing, and I'm just so appreciative of you guys for doing that. So again, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope to catch all of you guys in the next one.